As we finished off the last video with the landing gear on, on FM 104, uh, we were about ready to take the first wheel apart and uh, check out the inner tube because we thought that it might have a leak. Now the wheels are a fairly simple uh, assembly. There's, uh, it's split in the middle, there's two hubs, two sets of brakes and an axle and the hubs are held together with uh, five bolts like this that are a fairly heavy duty bolt to hold it together. The original people working on these I'm sure had a much better method of taking them apart than we did. Uh, we had to lay it on its side and we managed to slide it underneath uh, an old crash rescue fire truck we had here so that we could jack down on the tire to break the uh, grip that the bead had on the, on the hub. But we did manage to get it apart and I have the uh, parts laid out on the bench here. On the table in front of me we have the, uh, the two hubs and the two brake drum or brakes that uh, came off the first wheel we took apart. So each one of these two pieces is half of the hub for the for the wheel and each one has a brake drum attached and then the brakes go into that brake drum. We uh, tested the brake shoes here to make sure that they still work and we can demonstrate that. As these are air brakes all we need to do is apply a little bit of air pressure and we're able to show that the shoes actually will expand out and retract as they're supposed to. So the brakes are still actually operational on this tire. Since we uh, took the first wheel apart and found that the tube was actually holding air quite nicely, we thought we'd bring in the second wheel here and uh, just check it and see if we could put air in the tire or into the tube and see if it would hold air pressure. So we did that last week and it has since held the air pressure for approximately one week with the, uh, with the tube that was in there. So we don't think that we need to take this uh, wheel apart any further than we have. We did test the brakes as we uh, showed earlier in the video and they, act, they do work on this wheel as well so we'll be able to slide it right underneath as is and it will be able to be used for a display purpose if nothing else. Well, good morning. Um, this is the nose section of the Lancaster that we're in the process of restoring. Uh, so what we've done is we've taken the rivets off and we've taken a damaged skin off and we're going to be making a replacement. Once we get under that, we get down to the, to the ribs that form this structure. And what we've been doing, or I've been doing, is making new ribs up. Uh, I've got this one built on both sides, and uh, now I'm getting ready to do the next one up. As we build up these structures, uh, we'll restore the aircraft. We're only doing the ones that are in quite rough shape as these ones were corroded out in a number of spots and needed replacement. This one isn't so bad, so what we'll be doing is cleaning up and preparing it for priming and painting uh, before we go through the rebuilds. Some of these skins, as you can see, are a little careworn, and it's normally on the bottom of the, uh, the aircraft where the water sits and quite builds up and eats up the metal. So this is, uh, and as you can see, we're making pieces as we go along. And it's just like a great big puzzle. You just do one little section at a time. And once that's right, and it meets all the pieces that are already here, then we know it's in the right shape and place. At which time, now, once, now that I've got this done, now we're gonna make one of these up. And that's gonna be done on an English wheel. So we'll be able to shape it both in curvature and, and radius um, and it's just one of those little things that takes time and effort patience okay well this is the, the old bulkhead which had a lot of corrosion around it we decided that it would be better to make a new one so we positioned it on the back in such a way that we could router to match the old bulkhead and things like the door will go there and would be hinged so that access to look into the bomb bay would be available.
Now, as you can see, all of these small holes were drilled to match the existing bulkhead stiffeners. Now, they will be used to put these temporary fasteners in position to hold the stiffeners while we drill the rest of the holes. Um, so we were able to router all of these holes to match the existing bulkhead. These are items which we have already cleaned and painted and they would originally have been in this position on the old bulkhead which is this one but underneath we have the brand new one which will now be match drilled with these items um, this being a, a, an inspection door which will fit on here and um, it was used to look into the bomb bay and see, it, see if any bombs were still left. All of these existing stiffeners which have been repaired are fastened with temporary fasteners called Clecos. Um, and they, as you can see, are very easily removed, but the existing remainder of the, of, of the stiffeners have all been taken away to be sandblasted and then painted to suit the new bulkhead which will also be uh, uh, painted. At this point, we've taken the first loop out of the frame, and now we're cleaning off the excess glue and uh, plastic and scraping it and cleaning it and basically cleaning it up. Our next step was to clean the second loop and to frame up for gluing the third loop. Once we get most of the plastic off, we'll clean that up and then we'll use the electric plane to clean this surface and this surface so from front to back we have one inch, which is the way that it was designed. Then we'll clean up and angle the outside and the inside. One creation we came up with was a set of outriggers for our uh, automatic planer. This helps establish the, the levelness of the plane and the, width, the desired width to which we want to plane down. With the finished loops, the next thing we did was trim the tails to cut them for proper length. <laughs> 